Hello and welcome to Famous People Famous Events. My name is Nathan and I'll be reading Starstruck, A Cosmic Journey of Neil deGrasse Tyson, written by Kathleen Krull, Paul Brewer, and illustrations by Frank Morrison, published by Crown Books for Young Readers. Neil deGrasse Tyson is the director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City and the host of podcast slash TV show Star Talk, as well as the host of the revived TV series Cosmos. Let's begin. Our universe began its dance with what scientists call the Big Bang. After millions of years of darkness, spots of impossible brightness, stars, sizzled into shape. Some grew so massive that they exploded, sprewing stardust everywhere, every which way. Boom! The stardust contained what was needed to create more shapes, more patterns, the planets, the whole universe. Zoom forward almost 13.8 billion years to the Sky Theater at the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. On the dome ceiling, the planets and constellations created by the Big Bang pulsed against the black ink of space. Nine-year-old Neil deGrasse Tyson had never seen so many stars. After all, from his apartment in the Bronx, it looked like there was only about 12. Now above him were what seemed like millions, too many to be possibly real. Was this a hoax? A joke? He wasn't sure, but when the lights came on, his thoughts began to explode. The universe called me, he said simply, and he would never be the same. Starstruck, Neil started looking up whenever he could, even though he lived in an apartment building named Skyview. His view of the night sky wasn't very good. Too many bright city lights got in the way. His good friend Philip lent him a pair of binoculars. Neil used them to peer at the moonscape over the Hudson River, the glossy orb with its craters and shadows. And it came alive, he marveled. On a family trip out of the city, away from all the lights, he was able to see more. Sure enough, the night sky really did look like the one at the Hayden Planetarium. It was real, the sheer wonder of it all, the blinding beauty, the, mysteri the mysteries just waiting to be solved, fascinated him. Neil was hooked. He had a whole new goal. Becoming a baseball player was out. Now he wanted, he knew what he was going to be, an astrophysicist. A scientist who studies the universe. Neil's parents weren't scientists. They weren't rich, but they did have everything they could to help. For his 12th birthday, they bought him a telescope. Atop the 20 stories of Skyview, he examined the night sky in all its glimmering glory. His parents also bought him every science book on sale he could learn about what he was looking at. Neil had one of the biggest libraries any kid at school. His knowledge of the stars began to explode. The more Neil learned, the more he thirsted to know. But he needed a bigger, better telescope, one that cost more money than his parents could afford. Neil solved his own problem. He offered to walk his neighbor's dogs for pay. These were pampered city dogs with cute names like Tuffy, on rainy days, some of them even wore their own raincoats and boots. Eventually, he saved enough money to buy a five-foot-long telescope with his parents' help. Neil headed back up to the roof. Sometimes, people saw him up there and were afraid. What was an African-American boy doing on the roof? Was his long telescope really a rifle? Was he an armed robber? Often, they called the police. Neil solved this problem, too. When police officers stopped by, he would offer them the view from his telescope. He showed off the stars like powdered sugar flung against black velvet. He would point out his favorite planet, Saturn. Saturn just blew his mind with its dozens of moons and its stunning elaborate rings. It was the most gorgeous thing he'd ever seen. The police officers would usually end up won over. It turned out Neil could make others starstruck, too. Neil loved school. He loved to learn, but not every teacher was his fan. Your son laughs too loud. 
one told his mom. On his report cards, they complained he spent more time talking to friends than, playing, than paying attention. But his sixth grade teacher noticed something. Every single book he wrote, every single book report he wrote had to do with astronomy. She told him about a class at the Hayden Planetarium, Advanced Topics in Astronomy for Young People. Neil took the subway to classes at the planetarium by himself. He was often the youngest person, and some information sailed right over his head. But he wouldn't quit, pushing himself to learn more and more. Neil's quest to understand the cosmos made him a young star at the planetarium. The director of education was so impressed that he invited Neil on an unbelievable journey to the coast of northwest Africa. An ocean liner was being turned into a floating laboratory to view a total solar eclipse. 2,000 scientists and observers, including famous astronauts and science fiction writers, were making the two-week trip. At 14, his trusty telescope in hand, Neil was the youngest scientist aboard. Observing and studying the eclipse alongside expert scientists made him feel like a science superhero. Then, on the way home, he won the dance contest, the trivia contest, thanks to his knowledge of Saturn, the perfect ending to his first expedition. After passing tough tests, he made it into the Bronx High School of Science. He was a card-carrying nerd, winning the science fair prizes and subscribing to the brainy Scientific American magazine. In the lab, he was trying not to blow things up. In the physics, physics classes, he was getting to know the universe. His life wasn't all science. He excelled at dance, from ballet to ballroom, and was captain of the wrestling team. He even used his understanding of physics to win his matches. When he was 15, Neil got to go to a summer astronomy camp in the Mojave Desert in Southern California. Scorpions, tarantulas, and howling coyotes? No problem. This was bliss. Days were full of classes on the subjects he loved. Nights for observing with high-powered telescopes. So far from city lights, the stars burst with more radiance and in much greater number than he's ever seen since the first visit to the Hayden Planetarium. It was too inspiring for words, but with his dog walking money, he also bought a good camera for taking sky pictures. He used the camera to bring home the galaxies, constellations, moons, and planets he captured on film and shared his pictures with 50 adults at his first public talk at City College of New York. Was he nervous? No, take, talking about science was like breathing, and people liked his explosive excitement. A career in astrophysics was Neil's only goal. Many people noticed his ability and pushed him forward. Some didn't. He often had to cope with racism. Neil had even had friends who thought a future as an athlete or a leader in an African-American community would be better goals for Neil than becoming a scientist. But Neil had a strength burning inside, a flaming passion. He pictured it as a tank of rocket fuel and every new discovery, like seeing Saturn through a telescope for the first time, poured fuel into the tank. By the time he was starting to pick a college, his reputation in the scientific community was growing. The most famous scientist of his, of his day, the astronomer Carl Sagan, hoped to convince Neil to come to his school. One snowy February afternoon, Neil took the bus, of his, took the bus to visit Sagan at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. They talked nonstop about science while Neil toured the labs, and then Sagan drove the high school senior through the snow back to the bus station. In case the bus had trouble with the snow and Neil needed a place to stay, Sagan gave Neil his home phone number. Neil was touched, but also he heard many good things about Harvard University. That's the school he chose. In college, he stretched his muscles by wrestling, dancing, and running up and down every single path through the seats at the campus stadium. He stretched his brain by inhaling physics, mastering equations, and experimenting. And he stretched his wallet, earning money by writing, teaching, and tutoring. 
After 11 more years of school, he earned the highest degree possible in astrophysics. He was literally one in a million. A star. Neil kept looking up, continuing his research, solving mysteries. Then at age 35, he went to work at his beloved Hayden Planetarium, the very place where, he, where his dream had started. Eventually, he rose to become its director. One day, a TV station asked him to appear as an expert. He was happy to explain that the day's news about a solar flare, a small explosion on the sun. Afterward, Neil would jolt it. I've never before in my life seen an interview with a black person on television for, for expertise that had nothing to do with being black. He made it his mission to be visible, letting his enthusiasm explode in public. He wanted to infect others with a sense of awe and wonder at the universe. Who wouldn't want to study it? As he learned more and more new things in his research, it made him giddy, wanting to grab people on the street and say, Hey, have you heard this? Then it was time for Hayden Planetarium to update its display of planets. Neil met with other scientists and looked at the latest discoveries. And in, two, and in 2000, they made a stunning decision. Pluto, then the smallest planet, would no longer be labeled as a planet. In the new solar system display, they decided it had more in common with smaller icy objects than it did with other planets. Neil got hate mail from Pluto lovers everywhere, but he showed that the frontier of science can change as new facts get discovered. Six years later, the International Astronomical Union agreed with him. Pluto was demoted to a dwarf planet. No one has quite as much fun talking about science as Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is able to summon all the social energy his earliest teachers complained about. Fascinating facts tumble out, one explosion after another. He waves his hands and snaps his fingers. Laughter bubbles up, sometimes turning into a roar. Equations are awesome. The universe is hilarious. Certain equations make him misty. The sight of Saturn is simply jaw-dropping. He uses a lot of exclamations like, whoa! He has a strong opinion on just about anything scientific, from the mystery of dark matter to the silliness of zombies. I have an odd cosmic thoughts every day, he says. Wearing one of his many star-themed ties, he has more than a hundred. He never gets tired of appearing in public and dancing with words to describe science. He also pours energy into articles, books, tweets, and TV appearances. While Neil is rocking the world of science, he hangs on to his memory of being a small boy having his mind blown under a starry dome. Sometimes, when he's in a remote area and he sees all those stars, he thinks, this looks just like the Hayden Planetarium. And when he goes outside, he still looks up. I don't want to ever lose that. In life and in the universe, it's always best to keep looking up. This, in the author's note, one thing I want to point out here is his academics and all the degrees Neil deGrasse Tyson holds. After graduating from his prestigious high school, he earned a BA in physics from Harvard University, an MA in astronomy from University of Texas at Austin, and a PhD in astrophysics from Columbia University. Since then, he has received honorary doctorates from 22 other universities. I hope you've enjoyed this reading of Starstruck, The Cosmic Journey of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Make sure to follow the Carnegie Public Library, Washington Courthouse, Ohio YouTube channel, and our Facebook at CPLWCHO for more videos in the future. Thank you and see you next time.